What's up? What's going on, my friends? How you doing? It is Saturday night, and it's time to chill out. So, let me go ahead and grab the live stream link. We'll share that in the Discord, and then we shall get to it. All right, perfect, that's great. And switch this up, nice. Okay, hello, hello my friends. Let us uh, let us do the list of helloifications. What up, Jess, Lasagna, Shelton, Keebler, Millmaster, Eng, Loco, Stormtrooper, 10-4, Gossip, Felonius T, John, Jacob, Grasshopper, Clayton, who else? Who else? Yamagoro, Juglum, Error. What up? How you guys doing? Hello to you. Hello to the Lurka Durkers. What up, Zircon? What up, Kitsune? How you guys doing this Saturday? I hope your days have been less tumultuous than mine. All right. I hope you had nice, calm, chill days. What up, Ned? How's it going, my man? How's it going? I got into a little bit of a, a discussion with somebody in the comments on my most recent video talking about the lore. And uh, I realized that a bunch of people are making the lore work for them by just kind of writing it, writing like filler in in their head to make it work. And it's like, all right, I guess I can see why more people are liking it when I like, cause I'm looking at it going, I don't know how you enjoy this, but it's just because their brain is creating more and more of a narrative for them. So, so fair enough, man. I, the guy was like, I only have chill interactions in the comments now. I never interact with anybody who's negative. So this guy literally just wanted to talk about like, well, here's why I think things made sense. And I'm like, well, here's why I don't think they made sense. And then he's like, well, based on what you said, here's what I think. And then I basically said, yo, I'm glad that you found a way to fill things in that makes the story work for you. I'm just taking it as written and it don't work. So that's what it is. That's what it is. Wizards of the Coast need somebody to keep track of the lore. They literally have nobody to keep track of the lore. Nobody knows what they're talking about. It's all just random nonsense. How do you not have like somebody in charge of the story at all? How do you not have that? Where there's some guy's job to like keep track of the story and make sure it makes sense for real. Like, why are you writing stories where you expect us to get excited if you're not going to pay anything off? Like, people are expecting some kind of big payoff from the Gisa and Giraffe necropede thing where they're going to be like, whoa, it's going to be crazy. Like, people have all these insane theories where I'm like, man, I'm glad you're finding fuel for your imagination here. I love it when a story gets me fired up and I can think about different possibilities. But the magic story, unfortunately, there's just, they're just like, we want everybody to be in cowboy hats and whatever. And you're like, okay, can you give me reasons? And they're like, no, no. And it's like, okay, cool, man, have fun. Have fun, you silly kids. Again, I will reiterate my joy in no longer having to process that for human consumption. <laughs> what up, Kyle? How's it going, buddy? Keebler, glad to catch another live. Well, I'm happy to be here, man. Shelton, you're painting a custom Fallout deck box for a friend? That's nice. That's nice of you. Felonius T. I will never get off of Wizard's Naughty List, but even if I did, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I would never want to be that for the current incarnation of Wizards because imagine you actually were the guy in charge of lore. You would just go, hey, there was a bunch of problems in the previous story. You guys didn't actually go by the lore. And then you would just get ignored because they don't care. So you don't want a job where you have no power. My job is to protect penguins, but you can't actually protect penguins. And the company just beats them to death in front of you with a club constantly. And you just go, I thought you hired me as the penguin protector. Yeah, we need somebody with that title. Anyways, bam, bam, bam. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no. 
I would never want that. I would never want to work for Wizards of the Coast. It's a nightmare situation to be in. You're working on a game you love, seeing from the inside how horribly everything is falling apart and having your passion destroyed one day at a time. I feel bad for all regular level Wizards of the Coast employees who are working out of the, at the company out of love for their products because they're fucked. The corporate whores at the top are like pillaging and robbing the game and the, we have a renewed focus on the story. No, you don't. You are painting whatever you can on, slap lipstick on it for whoever will come up and kiss it, bro. You can't fool me. You can't fool me. Jess says, my board, everyone leave it alone. <laughs> All right, Jess, you're lord of the board, buddy. Thanks for the super chat. Let me get you up here, son. So, yeah, it would be wise of Wizards to have, like, somebody in charge of keeping track of the lore. But they're not going to listen to him anyways. Probably they did hire him. So, like, it's funny because you'd have a lore master kind of story story chief or whatever whatever title you want to call it. Story, story lord. <laughs> whatever title you like. He'd be like, this is what happened. And it's like, no, that's not what happened. They hired an author and they wrote the story. That story's canon. So, whatever it is you think you've got, they just ruin it. Like, for real. They're like, oh, yeah, the Blind Eternities is no longer where the multiverse ends and it doesn't it, it doesn't just encompass everything. What? I thought the Blind Eternities encompassed everything. Yeah, it does, but there's another thing that encompasses that. What's it called? Uh, it's called Outside the Blind Eternities. Oh. oh, okay. What's out there? Sarah. What? Yeah, like Sarah, the... the the dead planeswalk who died thousands of years ago. Oh, what she, how, what's she doing out here? Is it the real Sarah or what? It, oh, it's Sarah. And like, she's outside the multiverse and she can control the entire multiverse and stop time. Are all the dead planeswalkers out here? Can they all stop the multiverse? Why did Sarah like let all these people die? She's a good person. Like, why did she stop? You got to choose the moment, Elspeth. No, she doesn't. Sarah, this makes no sense. None of this makes sense. How are you here? Shut up. Everyone's going to lose their planeswalker spark from this too. Except Nahiri who's just going to stick it in a rock and go, bloop. <laughs> Imagine having to be in charge of that. <laughs> It'd be so aggravating. I wouldn't want that job. You couldn't pay me to do that, man. As they constantly screw up the story and you're like, we wrote this originally. Yo, we this is the story we came up in the room. What did you give these writers? Yeah, we just we look at writers and we go, oh, look at her picture. Oh, yeah, look at his skin tone. Perfect. Look at how many names they have. Hire him for eight bucks to write a story. Oh, you sure you don't want to like pick based on merit and give them actual fucking information to write the story? No, 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 no. We have a recommitted to the lore. So we need optics. We need people to see fancy looking names and the right pictures. It's not about their ability to write the story. Don't worry about giving them any of those details. Who cares? Everybody in hats. Yeah, Rakdos, the giant demon of destruction here. He's totally going to have a huge impact. Do you like Rakdos? He's going to have a real big impact. And you're like, listen to the story. And you're like, okay, cool. So they haven't done much with Rakdos yet. He's just looked in a door. And he's just punched round. But that can't be it. Oh, they're stopping a train. Rakdos will Oh, no, they're not using Rakdos. They're blowing up a bridge and using a bunch of undead that aren't there to stop a train. Well, that's okay. Because, you know, when they're going to use Rakdos to scout for Tarnation because he's a gigantic demon with endless endurance and he can just scour the entirety of the world and he's beefy enough that nothing can stop him. And since Tarnation literally has a giant floating molten rock at the top, he'll find it. Oh, no, he's not helping. That's okay, though, because when we get to Tarnation and we go to the most dangerous place there is, we're definitely going to bring Rakdos, the Chaos of Demon and Destruction, because maybe we didn't use him before because he maybe he's going to do too much collateral damage. But when we go to the camp full of the worst scum on Earth who are super dangerous, we'll definitely bring Rakdos, especially since he's big enough to fight against the leader of the... Oh, he's... Where is he? Oh, he's not coming. Oh... Okay, and so they all just walk into this deadly camp that nobody can ever find because they kill everyone who finds it immediately, and they all just stroll in. Dude, okay. And then these rough and tough guys are all like, you don't seem like you're round from here, Kellen. I'm going to point my thunder blaster at you and then do nothing with it. Oh, wow. Dangerous and epic and thrilling. I challenge you to a battle. 
I swallow thunder. But then Kellen's all like, I really don't like this. And goes, whoo. And then Akul's all like, whoa, whoa, I'm dizzy and dazed because you don't like this, Kellen. Oh my God, how did I do this? Questioning himself in his belief broke the magic. Oh my God, no. And then Akul doesn't kill Kellen even though he has to kill him in front of all of his men to maintain his leadership. And this is to the death. Instead, Kellen is just uh, captured by Sterling's guards. Without any explanation of what happened. Sterling guards show up. No, you can't see the battle. They just show up and, and like, a cool loses kind of deal. Okay. This is great. Doomblade Super Chat says, We open in the Warhammer deck today. Uh, Instagram, we're ranting again. I wonder how long we can make content picking apart Magic Story. <laughs> I mean, bro. Bro, the story is... is laughably bad laughably bad and more important it's lazy there's no attempt to connect everything uh, the fact that they said they're rededicated to lore is incredible an incredible lie doom blade you are lord of the board big boy andrew g's membership message check out this thunder like for real when if you've read it you just go they keep mentioning thunder like it matters but they've never really bothered to explain what it is what it can do, you're just supposed to be like, oh, it's thunder power. Thunder, thunder, thunder. Explanation, no! Right? That's a terrible variation of Thundercats, ho, in case you didn't pick up on what I was doing there. Oh, Doomblade getting the boot. Al coming in. To my favorite Newfie, his wife and pals, treatment on Tuesday and a colonoscopy. I don't need to live, but I want to. I'll be around. Hell yeah, buddy, you have fun getting that tube fed up your butthole because I have a sneaking suspicion that you're lying about dying. And this is probably all a scam just to get a doctor to feed a hose into your butt. So I'm just going to tell you right now, if you're around in the future, I'm always going to know that you're a giant liar who makes shit up out and that you literally just tried to trick a doctor to go guts deep on you with a fucking garden hose. And if you think I don't see right through you, thanks for the super chat. You fucking faker! You're just getting a doctor to garden knows your butthole! Be brave enough to admit who you are! It's okay, man. It's okay. I ain't judging you. I mean, I'm judging you for lying about wanting it, but I ain't judging you for wanting it. <laughs> you feel me? You see the difference? Lord of the board, garden hose butt boy. <laughs> you can't fool me. <clears throat> what up, Kensuke? How's it going? Oh, I didn't answer about opening the Warhammer deck today. We're not doing that today. No, I would have put that in the title or whatever. I wanna, I wanna fully enjoy going through that deck, and today has been. I would, it would be challenging to fully enjoy it today. That's, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> it's about more than just a doctor and its finger. It's about the camera on the end of those and the video feed. You get to keep those memories forever to replay again and again. It's like taking home a memento from Canada's Wonderland, except your insides are the roller coaster. Whoop! Whoa! <laughs> Daniel, you're painting Warhammer? Nice. Nice. Kyle <laughs> says, if I wanted that, I'd just go to the bar. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. That's funny. So yeah, man, ultimately, bro, I would I would love if we got back to some good storytelling. I don't know what storytell I don't know what story Bloomberg's gonna have, but I feel like it can't be worse than the last two. You know what I mean? Because it's just gonna be an animal questing without a bunch of forced crap. So the only forced crap is really Ral Zarek as an otter, and who cares? Who cares? They shoved Ral Zarek into Thunder Junction like he's supposed to matter. I want to hide the vault away or something, Kellen, and make sure nobody can get it. What you do, I'll trust you. I trust everybody. I'm a moron. <laughs> I 
Neb, you think Hollywood movies seem to have run out of stories? There's still a whole bunch of fun movies out there, man. But they're like the big mainstream ones you see in the theaters tend to be most of the most of the problem. You can find some goofy fun stuff like that movie they cloned Tyrone. That movie, now I'm gonna fully admit there's definitely some holes in it where you go, wait, logically this doesn't follow. Why did you do this? But overall, the story's pretty entertaining and ridiculous. So for recent movies, that one's pretty enjoyable. Uh, well, yeah, buddy. You got to stick around for years so I can call you a liar and say it was just about you getting butt hosed. That's the deal. You keep living, and I'll keep making fun of you. That's that's how it works. That's, that's how it works. Dark Elder Super Chat says, Rosewater used to be a useful person. Years in that dumb management must have killed him inside. Anyhow... Anyhow, I mean, bro, you're like if you look at if you look at his at his job, right? Clearly, he's just constantly surrounded by this crap, and you're just gonna like you're also gonna tune out people's complaints. Let be let's be very real. I completely understand why people just get tuned out by wizards and whatever. It's because while there are people who have valid complaints, there are tons of people who either don't know how to express that valid complaint in a reasonable way where it's like the thunder junction story sucks. So you should quit your job and die. And it's like, that is the most useless fucking shit to say, right? What you do is criticize the problems with it that actually matter and go, here are the flaws you have with your story. Here's why it doesn't make sense. You need to fix that because it's insulting to us as customers that you give us this level of garbage, but it's not quit your job. It's not stop existing. Right. But you get a bunch of people acting that way. And then you just start to mark everybody that way. If I think that some like I used to just go off of if I think somebody's coming at me sideways, then they are right now. I take the position of I'll give them a little more space to figure out, are they coming at me or is it just this could be interpreted as they're coming at me? That's it. I try to give people a little more space but you know if they're, if they're if they're rude in the wrong way to start with i'll just silence them immediately you don't have to take feedback from anybody on anything like literally you don't have to listen to anybody's criticism on anything but people are so entitled now that like the, the stream i did earlier today where i made the mistake of doing it like this instead of like this never would think it would cause that big a problem but instead i had a bunch of idiotic children flooding into my stream because it puts your live stream into this live and shorts feed and just feeds it to people and then they start ah, why does this exist and it's like bro you can't live in a world where the things that you don't like don't exist that's not how it works because i promise you there are people who don't like you so as a result of extrapolating that, you can't exist and everything you like can't exist. So what you have to do is be an adult and go, I choose what I engage with and leave the things that I don't like. But there's so much now where it's like, this exists and I hate it. So I have the right to go directly. Like, like I don't constantly post on every post Wizards makes going, screw you guys, blah, blah. I have my own place where I air my concerns. They can find that information here if they want to. Other people can too, but I am not going directly to them and just going, gah, gah, gah. and if I did, they would be well within their rights to just, I don't need to put up with this here. Nobody owes you the right to complain in their own space. And people don't seem to get that where they go, no, but it's me. No, no, it's me, bro. This is my space. You have your own to do whatever you want. You can literally go make a channel and complain about me every day. And guess what? I won't even show up and be like, knock it off. I'll just get, okay. Have fun. You're not the only one talking shit about me, so go ahead. Like, knock yourself out. Fill your boots. But I'm sure not going to tolerate it here. There are people who think that they can come and be dicks to you and that you have to put up with it. And it's like, you're just gone. Like, that kind of, it's 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 bizarre. Al Super Chat says, the camera at the end of my log ride happened <laughs> sick it. <laughs> Uh, Malik, you're sad because your usual way of doing things was to buy at least one box of product and get the singles you wanted. Now you feel like you've been priced out and can really only buy singles. Bro, I feel you. I was literally thinking about like the upcoming pre-releases and I'm like, bro, it's going to get to the point where like, and it's getting there already. The, it's like 50 bucks. I'm like, am I just not going to be able to like, I can't get boxes anymore for real. Like the magic that I get comes from other people. Like for real. So I, I 
I feel you. I, I got one pre-release kit of Markov Manor, and that's it. And, like, Thunder Junction, I'm going to be able to do a pre-release, but I'm not getting anything. And that doesn't hurt that much because it's Thunder Junction. But Bloomboro's coming, and I feel you, bro. I feel like I've been left behind. I can't, I can't afford to buy the magic either, so don't worry, bro. I mean, I worry if you want, but I get you. I understand. Yeah, Scorpageist, exactly. When people are angry and complaining, they go hyperbolic for catharsis instead of doing what might actually help them. And people are misguided. I remember when I started out and I made videos yelling about how people buying the Masters boxes like Masters 25 and Iconic Masters were a problem because they were basically saying to Wizards, yeah, we'll pay these prices and setting that into motion, right? And it's not okay to blame people for buying games they want to play. Like you can blame the company for being greedy, all this other stuff, but it's not okay to blame people in the world who are just trying to live their lives for buying game cards that make them happy at a price they find acceptable, right? Like underneath it all. But I wasn't looking at it that way. I was looking at it purely from my perspective and what it meant to me, right? So it is what it is, man. People, people don't realize how they're acting as well. So I try not to take the shit personally most of the time. Fisher says, this stream is just what the doctor ordered. Well, guess what? You get some bonus, Fisher, because you know what happened yesterday? You made it. You made it, buddy. You made it to the role of Mega Glory. Five entries into the Box of Glory. You are now one of the Mega Gloried. Behold! Bam. So there you go. A nice little extra bonus. Jamestown says the magic I get comes through the internet from you to me. Oh, bro, you got that HDMR card? You got that HDMR card plugged into your butthole? Cause here it comes. <laughs> you're Lord of the Bard, edging out Dark Elder with the Price Is Right maneuver, a time-tested tradition here, time-honored tradition and tested both, both really. James going to towns on Dark Elder. <laughs> the two S's are for double sucking. Grasshopper, you were going to take advantage of the sale that was going on on TCG Player on Friday. <laughs> Use my link when you do. But you held off because the prices were, the prices were spiking. Hey, fair enough. Fair enough. Yellow Jacket, you stopped playing drafts because uh, Murders at Karlov Manor isn't doing it for you? I feel you, actually. I have the resources on Magic Arena to do 100 quick drafts right now. And I don't feel like playing the Markov Manor quick draft. I'll probably do one Thunder Junction one. But I'm saving my resources to go balls deep on Bloomboro, right? So... But yeah, I know. I know what it feels like to a degree to be left behind. I'm fortunate. The pre-releases and stuff I get to do are because people have sent the game store that I go to. Here you go. Here's some money for Mike to go to the pre-release. And I still have enough left over from Bo Falcon's last hookup that I have enough for the Thunder Junction pre-release just. And that's it. So I've left it there waiting for the Thunder Junction pre-release. And then the rest is question mark in the air? Because, yeah, I, I mean, play booster boxes are over $200 a piece. It was it was a stretch for me when booster boxes were a hundred. Magic costs twice as much now. So does fucking groceries. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like everything's gone up, so I can't justify the expenditure on magic. The money has to be allocated to other things. It's just the way it goes. If I, but if I was rich, I would just buy the magic and not even care. So whatever, man. Whatever. I'm not letting the disappointment that I have about being left behind make me bitter towards the people who can enjoy what I can't because there's tons of stuff I can't afford that other people can. And at the end of the day, I know how hard life is. So if that stuff's making them happy, more power to them. Them having it doesn't actually negatively impact my life. You choose whether to let other people having things bother you, right? Like that is part of it. So I don't know, man. 
I feel for everybody who's in the same kind of boat, and I recognize that I am fortunate being the magic historian, that I'm gifted things that, like, I would completely, I'm going to be real. I wouldn't even be involved with Magic the Gathering and any of the new stuff anymore if it wasn't for being like a YouTuber or whatever, because it's so expensive that I would, I literally wouldn't be able to afford it. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't. Can't believe Modern Horizons is over $500 on Amazon. I can. They want to force rotation into the format and keep it expensive so they can have high-priced singles to market, right? Think about the fact that they made the special alt versions of Ragavan, the secret layer super special ones that you only get as prizes or whatever. And the price tag on those is thousands of dollars. They're just, they're just generating absurd numbers out of nothing. It's not sustainable, and it will all collapse, but it's currently working, and that's all they care about. Jess, if it helps, I don't look poor. Well, thanks, buddy. That's nice of you to say. I try to be very smart with my money. This shirt, Goodwill. This sweater, Goodwill. My pants, Walmart. Like, you know what I mean? I buy cheap, affordable clothing that looks reasonable on me. So this sweater was like 8 bucks. This shirt was like 11 bucks. Like... So I'm glad that I I'm glad that I don't look I'm glad I don't look poor. And I don't consider myself to be poor anymore, right? Like I can afford to pay all of my regular monthly housing expenses. I don't have to try and like juggle how am I going to pay the electricity bill because it's $10 more because of winter and the heat, right? So I'm not I am not pleading poverty. I am simply like I used to be insanely poor. Now I can buy a normal amount of groceries that is, I wouldn't, it's not like a like crazy abundant, but it's sufficient, right? So I'm in that area between desperate poverty and middle class. I'm not middle class and I'm not desperately poor. I'm in between where I can enjoy a comfortable life in terms of having enough to eat, having a stable roof over my head where I don't have to worry about a lunatic breaking down my door. Um, well, I guess anything's possible. I guess I shouldn't rule that out entirely, but you know what I mean? So like I have, I like, if I'm being technically, technically, um, like just looking at the numbers, I could buy a box of magic cards, but that shit would have to come out of like emergency funds. And I'd be crackheaded to take that out of there. What if we need dental money? What if we need this? Do you know what I mean? So like, I have a little reserve of money that is for emergencies and that's what it's for. It's not for, I could buy a box of magic cards. So I watch my buddies getting boxes and stuff and it's like, cool, I hope you get good stuff and enjoy it. And I crack the packs and stuff that like, I've got old school magic packs. If you want to get real technical about it, I have a booster pack that's worth more than one of those boxes, right? So I can't pretend like when I have a booster pack that's worth, this is worth like the same as a box of Markov. But this is also a super crazy piece of history and I'm going to open this up in a video and all that value is going to go because the value is for the pack sealed, right? And I'm not just going to turn around and sell this gift for money. I would if I was absolutely desperate and couldn't afford to eat because I'm not an idiot, right? But I have the luxury that I can keep this pack and open it for a video. I'm going to lose all the value. We're going to open this in a live stream. That live stream is not going to and come anywhere close to recovering the cost of this and I will be technically like negative valued by it but I didn't have to pay to get this this was a gift from one of Magic's head designers so I just get to enjoy the experience of that and that is a luxury that I fully recognize so I never want to make it sound like I'm like I empathize and feel the experience of people like I'm getting priced out of Magic and it hurts I get it I get it but I also have the luxury of being the magic historian and people do hook me up. They used to, I used to get sent full on booster boxes and stuff and people were buying them from the store, but let's be real, things have gotten tougher and it's down across the board, right? People don't send me that stuff on that level. They don't have the money to send to the store on that level. My Patreon's like down by, I would say what, 60, 70% overall. Everything is down for me. And that's fine because the pandemic pushed it up to whatever highs and I ride the tides of whatever they are because this is what I want to do. And getting to do what I want to do is the most important thing to me comparatively. Now, if things get to low to the point where this can't suffice, then I will have to find other things to supplement it or whatever. And we'll have to rebalance. But for the time being, I can manage all of my bills reasonably, be a full-time entertainer, 
and I am happy to be able to get to live this life. And I accept that that means that I can't get, like I could go and get a job and working for extra hours to get money to pay wizards for these overpriced boxes and stuff and then have no energy and less time to hang out with you guys and all that. Like, it sounds insane. It sounds insane. Malik, you're sad you can't engage the game you love like you used to. You want to but can't. I completely understand, bro. That is an echo of my soul, 100%. You've been around since, like, 94 like me. It's rough. Mox man, saying it's got a Mox diamond inside. Bro, I saw that you were here, but I don't think that I said hello because I got distracted. Uh, speaking of which, Bull Falcon, hello to you. Am I feeling, did the bacon make you feel better this morning? The bacon did make me feel better this morning. Today has been, I wouldn't rate it as an A1 day. It's a, it's a, A. let's just make it through it. And that's all right. That's all right. You know? I appreciate I appreciate the consideration. The fact that you guys give a shit makes me feel better. I wish that I'd been paying attention this morning and rotated the stream so it would have just been us instead of a bunch of randos coming in. And going forwards, I will make sure the breakfast streams are horizontals so we only have to hang out with the people who actively want to come to the stream instead of YouTube constantly throwing new people into the stream. It's like, can you not? Can you not? I don't want this. I know a lot of people are blind number chasers, but I'm not. I'm not. I don't just want the maximum number of people at any cost. There's a particular vibe that I'd like my live streams to have, right? I guess that's a little selfish, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <sighs> Bo, can I make it just a subscriber stream? I don't know if you can do that when you set up the... Um, I don't, I don't even need to, though. All I have to do is rotate the phone and it automatically changes. Like, literally, YouTube recently changed it so it's automatically puts the stream in vertical. And it says, we recommend you put it in vertical because we'll show that in the live and shorts feed. And I just didn't think about what that was going to mean. I, for some reason, didn't go, oh, yeah, don't you, bro, you don't want this. So, literally, all I have to do is just go like this and change the settings. And it'll, before the stream starts, and it will just do, like, the equivalent. Because it's not like you have to be a subscriber to be able to come in and comment on the streams, right? And I, I was using that to keep the bots out, but the bots sort seem to have been sorted, so I'm not worrying about it. Mox, man, you were unloved and ignored. Listen, I may ignore you, but I always love you, all right? You motherfucker. You goofbag beardo. Jess, my hair is so thick it goes back into place when I put my hands through it. Lucky. You know what, bro? You're right. I am lucky, actually. I am 40 fucking five. My hair, like maybe I got like, if I look at younger pictures of me, there's probably maybe my hairline's moved back a little bit. Maybe I got a little bit of like whatever you call it back going on up here. But for real, my hair is like massively thick. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I'm definitely very lucky in that regard. Like, some of my friends started balding in their 20s, man. They bend down and tie up their shoe, and I see the top of their head, and I'm like, that's rough, man. That's not fair, bro. That's not fair. But if I ever did go, like, like bald enough, I would just go full on. Welcome to the Thunderdome. Bum, 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 bum. Like, full on baldo, you know? Oh, Malik, you're also having problems with your friend group as the same time as being left behind the cards? That's no good. Doomblade says, couldn't you order custom cards with a blue core? I mean, there are. There are some. I don't know. I don't know who specifically does that, but... Ugh, ugh. Going, hey, man, I can't get magic cards anymore. Yeah, but can't you get fakes? Doesn't... It's not the same. Being left behind. Cracked and Boosters is fun. You know, it's a journey. It's enjoyable. The fact that Wizards is greedy and gross and trying to get the most they can from us doesn't change that it's still an awesome game and it's still satisfying to get open boost. Like, I've been just getting that through Arena, mostly. Just winning a booster here and there and cracking it. Like, when I go into the LGS, all that stuff is... I look at it all longingly, but pff, whatevs, right? That's how it is. That's how it is, man. Thanks for the super chat, Doomblade. Ned, you shaved? It's it's a strong look, man. Like, a bald head is a strong look, 100%. 
Yeah, my girl, salt and pepper hair. I think that's going to happen to me at a certain point. Like, technically, there is some white white hairs in here. Like, they're in there. There's not a lot of them, but they're there. They're there. Trevor, you've been going bald since 95. Damn, decades. Testify. <laughs> Testify, Chrome Dome. <laughs> I paint my head silver. I'm fucking Destro. Cobra! Let's go. <laughs> Shotter, you notice your LGS didn't stock new magic content? Well, for real, store's telling me, yeah, I'm not bringing in Assassin's Creed unless somebody pre-orders it. Like, there's one guy who wants it, I'll bring it in for him. I'm not buying it as a shelf product. Man, I feel dried out. Would I say the quality of media in general is overall degraded since I was a kid? The current era of stuff is awful to the point where things in the past that wouldn't meet my standards of entertaining are entertaining because the the current era of stuff is so awful but i think that's actually a recent trend i don't think it's all just a as purely simple as 30 years ago everything was they made was better but i do feel like 30 years ago the majority of things were made to entertain you and now like, it's just the word content. Like, content is a new term used to describe videos and all that stuff. It's a fairly nondescript term that literally just means something that contains something. It's like sausage filling. And so I was thinking about that today, actually. I would like to go out to the movies. There are multiple movies in the theater right now that seem worth seeing. Dune 2 isn't for me, but the new Ghostbusters seems really appealing. And they have a Slimer popcorn bucket where his mouth's all open. Ah! Like, it seems like it's going to be a fun movie. And I noticed the runtime. The runtime said 107 minutes. And I went, oh, thank you. Thank you. Can we please go back to the days of an hour and a half long movie and you only make them longer when you have to because you just can't get it down, right? This all boils down to the content era where movies are made based on a full checklist of things that need to be included, like a lot of the modern messaging uh, insanity that was shoved in there. So that has to be in there. But on top of that, it's all being designed for streaming services. So these movies are like, okay, we have to hit all this stupid political agenda shit. We have to make the movie this long and put these kind of product crossovers and everything into it. But none of it is dedicated to making it entertaining or coherent. And so you end up with hollow empty garbage that costs hundreds of millions of dollars to keep people watching a streaming service for two and a half hours just to keep your streaming service fuller than the other guys in some kind of never-ending content churn keep your eyeballs glued forever but don't actually absorb anything of worth it's it's insane it's all just like oasises that turn into sand when you get there and you're like i just need some water and they're like this ain't about water boy right that's what I think the problem is. So I think we've just gone through, like, whatever we're in now feels like always. Whatever's been going on for the last two to three years, whatever it is, feels like forever because of the nature of our human brains. And I think that we're stuck in North America in a drought of entertainment for entertainment's sake and a agenda-pushing... Um, meet the requirements of other goals. Like the movies aren't made for the purpose of entertaining you. That's the last thing on their mind. They're just like, okay, a movie has to have this, 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 this paint by numbers with no soul. And so you can't resonate with it and you just go, okay, that existed in front of me. That's what movies are. They exist in front of me. Yellow Jacket, bro, let me explain something to you. At 22... Life is fucking pure glory for you, motherfucker. Don't even. Duh, I was born at the wrong time. Bro, you didn't have to go fucking running into a gutter when you saw a torn up hustler, did you? Just to find out how horrifying a fucking vagina is, did you? Oh my god. Oh my god, a hustler where this chick's fucking stretching herself like she's trying to tear herself in half. And I'm like, that's what it looks like? Oh no. Like, bro, 
You could just go on Twitter and see ladies' buttholes like it's nothing. I, uh... All of it. Everything that exists is available to you. Back when I lived, you fucking got to see fragments of shit and only what they would let you see on TV. Like, you get access to everything. So what that the mainstream stuff they're making is garbage? You can see every awesome fucking thing that's made and if you're 22, I promise you, you haven't seen most of it. You have not seen most of the awesome stuff that already exists. Crazy, man. Crazy. Lasagna, take, take, take time, take time to read your own sentences before you type them. When you want to say to somebody, that was very specific, may I refer you to a psychiatrist, you need to learn how to spell psychiatrist, and you need to start with the word, the word that. Because when you go, what was very specific, may I refer you to my physio physiatrist, I go, do you need assistance? Are you having a fucking medical emergency? Are you having a stroke? English, motherfucker, do you speak it, right? Like, for real, for real. The number one rule is, when you want to talk shit, you got to come correct 100%, because if you fuck it up, you just fucked up, right? It's like, nah, nah, you just lost, bitch. We're playing volleyball, and you're like, serve, and the ball just fucking completely splanked on the ground, right? You didn't even hit it with your wrist. So yeah, there's so much awesome stuff out there, bro. 100%. 100%. It's crazy. What you got to worry about at your age is you just got to hope that you fucking... Yeah, actually, you're probably old enough that you made it through without getting fucked by social media. But there's like the new generations of people coming up don't know how to have conversations with people. And I don't mean, oh, when I'm in a conversation, I'm, I don't know what to say. I mean, they do not know how to start a fucking conversation. That's crazy, bro. That's insane. I've been talking to motherfuckers since I was three, random people. I'm lucky I didn't get stranger danger. My fucking, my dad's getting, uh, getting like the car fucking repaired or something like that. And I'm chatting with some guy in the fucking, in the room, getting us, uh, in the waiting room, getting us a ride home or whatever. So the idea that like kids are just not socially conditioned to talk with each other now is wild and I feel bad for them. Being brought up on social media with constant comparisons and everything, bro, you're not the hottest chick in your school and you gotta see all these pictures of the hottest chick in your school and all this other stuff, like so many different layers. There's no escaping any of it because it's all online and you're a fucking eight year old who's gotta focus on your brand and building a social presence. You don't want it, man. You don't want it. Nobody fucking understands what it's like to deal with waves and waves of people online. And like the kids just happen to deal with each other at that age growing up is already too much. Take it from me. People who are fucking envious of this shit, I don't think you understand the fucking heaviness and other stuff that comes with it. Having fucking people turn on you on a dime. Like having people just seeing you as a fucking meal ticket to use. Having people in real life turning on you and getting angry at you just because things are going your way. And they gotta fucking try and tear you down. It don't feel good. It don't feel good. But I, you know what? I don't want to go on about that because I don't want to be a fucking bummer. But says the guy who starts talking about kids being messed up and whatever. Ah, whatevs, man. Whatevs. I ain't gonna pretend like my mind ain't been in a dark place lately. It is what it is. I'm getting together tomorrow with family. You know, we're all getting together. So, you know, that'll be good and bad, right? <laughs> Kids nowadays don't have bikes. They have electric bikes and three-year-olds on iPads all day. It's insane, man. That That's wild. Like, you can't learn the same way from screens that you do from the physical world. There's studies that have shown that physically writing things genuinely helps your mind store it more. I'm still a guy who writes everything in notes. I could just yammer at my phone and just blah, blah, blah. Computer, take notes. Stardate, log, blah, blah, blah. I still hate everything. I'm the most bitter man on YouTube. Note that. You know, like, I, <laughs> I write notes that say that. Scorpio, guys, you feel fortunate you can remember a time before all the social media? 
bro, I'm glad that I straddled the fucking world of the non-internet and the internet so I can maintain some fucking perspective, right? For real. I love what the internet brings because it allows for things like this where, like, this is the best, bro. I've always wanted to be a fucking entertainer and getting to do this is incredible to me. And the internet has opened up this pathway. So it's awesome. But it also opens up the pathway for all bad shit to get to you. So you got to find a way to protect yourself because the protections aren't in place now. This shit is like... The, the internet is like the Wild West days where it's straight up, bro, back when cars were originally invented and people would have to fucking have a shotgun in their car and be like, yo, I'm going to go around a corner. Ch -ch -ch Bang, motherfucker, I'm coming. And there was like no seatbelts, no nothing. There were no laws about nothing. Social media is the same way. Companies are literally allowed to program their, their software in a way intentionally designed to depress and stress you out to maximize your engagement. If they keep you depressed and angry, you will stay on the feed looking for dopamine hits or people to fight. It's insidious. Why do you think when you click on things, you always see the most inflammatory takes? Why do you think that you always see people being their angriest when you look at it? It's all designed to rile you up and get a response so somebody can make fucking money. It's fucked. It's fucked. And they're going to look back at this way. They're going to look back at the way we handle social media the same way we look back at motherfuckers eating tomatoes off of lead plates. These bitches didn't know that the tomato acid was eating into the lead and literally putting lead into their food and that lead is super bad for your health. They were just living with it. That's it, man. Social media is hella tomatoes on the leadiest of plates. Dominic, you're depressed and angry? You should be, bro. Look at you. Look in the mirror, man. With that kind of... Like, you go into the world with that fucking I am a molester mustache. You deserve to be angry. I gotta eat something, man. Wow. Okay, I gotta... Hold on. I gotta go get some nuts in my mouth or something. I'll be right back. Uh, oof. I ain't feeling right. got up late so the whole eating schedule's off. Normally we would have had dinner before the stream, but I didn't, so. Lasagna, ding, 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 don't be a dink. Well, by popular demand, enjoy this for the next fucking 30 seconds. Don't be a dink. Use my Amazon link. When Hatchet goes for a drink. Bookmark that Amazon link. Don't be a bitch. You gotta scratch that itch. Bookmark that Amazon link. I got fucking bills to pay, y'all. Use my Amazon link. <laughs> this is gonna take some work. Pretty good, huh? Pretty good. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. I feel like in another life, I would have been an epic marketer. Actually, what am I talking about? I do fucking promos for companies and I epically market them. In this life, I'm that too. Fuck. Yeah, yo. <laughs> Mm. Seriously though, book that fucking Amazon link. Don't be a dink. <laughs> if you shop on Amazon.com anyways, fucking helped me out, man. Mm -mm -mm. Oh. 
Mm -mm -mm. Smoked almonds, guys. Ah. Mm. What up, BMX? You showed up just in time to watch me suck my fingers, boy. Mm -mm. Sucking my fingers for that saltiness. Suck it for saltiness, y'all! Mm -mm -mm. Desolator, what's up, bro? You know what? You almost got me playing a fucking Markov Manor quick draft today. And then I remembered that I hate that shit. <laughs> Doomblade Super Chat says, I got lucky enough I didn't grow up on social media, but I did grow up on YouTube. I'd love coming home and watching my favorite creators. It was like watching Saturday cartoons. It's healthy s and All right. I don't know about that last part, but <laughs> I feel you up until there. I didn't grow up watching YouTube. And this is the crazy thing about YouTube to me is, do you know what do you know what YouTube was for for me for most of my life? No, for most of YouTube's life. <laughs> YouTube was around for most of my life. For most of YouTube's life, it was holy shit, man. I want to listen to fucking Guns N' Roses November Rain. Let's go watch the music video. Bum bum bum. Bum 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 bum. Bum bum bum. bum, bum, bum. You know what I'm talking about? We And you go, it's freaking the cold November rain. <laughs> fucking slash, tearing it up. You go, slash, stand outside that church, bro. <laughs> I would just use it for music videos. That's all it was. I'm like, yo, YouTube's where you go to listen to music. And that's it. And that's what I used it for for fucking years. And then Carly, Carly showed me, yo, check it out. People like make shows and shit on YouTube. And I was like, oh. Cool. And then we found some cool stuff. And I'm like, this is actually pretty decent, man. I like it. And it's like, you don't have to deal with this, like, the corporate produced bullshit. It's just people, right? It's just people, son. This is... There would be food tomorrow, but no drinks. Oh, Pepsi. Fuck Pepsi. Fuck Pepsi. I drink barks or nothing. Fucking four exclamation marks. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. I knew I should have bought some barks. Yeah, Desolator, you got it. You got it. Break stop, you wish you'd give me the good vibes that I gave you when you were going through shit last year. You're a gem, and I'm so glad that you're so glad you found my channel. Well, hell yeah. You know what, buddy? Kind words like that mean a lot, son. So don't even worry. That helps pick up my mood. It's nice. Dominic says, calm down there, Axel Maple Leaf. Take me down. <laughs> Where's that one? Where it's just some meme on Axel Rose, and he's like, uh... He's all fat and he's singing about french fries. It's hilarious. You know when he runs up to the mic and then he's just out of breath? <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> 10 for you. You still look up November Rain? That means you like good music, buddy. Heavy metal, you saw Guns N' Roses with Alice in Chains? Oh, that's fucking awesome, bro. You're the man in the box. That's great. That's great. Man. Fucking old. Oh, I got nut dust on me. Guys, why didn't you fucking tell me? Why didn't you tell me I got nut dust on me? I'm on the internet in front of the people. Come on, fucking Desolators here. Come on, guys. Come on, we got fucking Moxman. We got Desolator. I'm here with my peers. I can't be looking all nut dusty. I thought you guys had my back. There you go, Dominic. Oh. 
Yo, guys, if you ever want to get done in the butt in a prison cell, go to Dominic's d disgusting fucking LGS. The only thing grosser than the actual premises are his prices. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Dominic. <laughs> Oh. Mm -mm -mm. Hmm. All right. You know, that's a lot off now. I'll have to uh, take. A, I'll take a look at that and get back to you, bro. I see the question. I'll get you an answer. Lasagna, you don't tell anyone when they have nut on them? That makes you a piece of garbage, bro. Somebody with a peanut allergy has peanut on them, you won't even tell them? Uh, and don't even try and pull that, well, that's actually a legume, so technically. No, technically, you're a fucking dickhead, just so you know. You want people to die, and I see it. You're scum. <laughs> Am I interneting right? That's what you do, right? You take somebody, and then you change their position into something horrific, where it's like, well, this is all he said. No, he wants people to die. That's what that means. <laughs> Dominic has a jail cell to keep you trapped in too. Maybe he could trap people with a good time, but he doesn't know how. The real fabrication is that his store is worth going to. And only he will get that because he's the only one who knows the name of his store. <laughs> What? You wanted to see Faith No More? They opened on the East Coast, patent shit on Axel's monitor and got the band kicked off before the West Coast. <laughs> what? You boiled foot-long tamarinds in pot and drank it? It was so... What are you, Desolator, what are you doing to your mouth hole, bro? The fact that you eat those... I, I actually... I think it was like two weeks ago, not even, maybe a week ago, where I was talking about how you fooled me into trying those stupid Dorito Limonita things, and one of them was nightmarishly hot. Why? Why? What are you doing? What are you doing? Yamagara yeah, allergy to cat dander is a lie? Fuck that, bro. I'm fucking allergic to cat dander. Eat my fucking bag, dickhead. Allergy doesn't mean you auto-fucking die. That's not what allergy means. It's not auto death. So no, fuck you. Cat dander allergies are really fucking real. Trust me, bro. You know how many fucking goddamn antihistamine pills I had to spam when I was banging bitches who had fucking cats? Fuck you. Say that shit ain't real. My stuffed up nose, pill popping ass knows the truth. And I ain't having them lies. I'm not buying no tamarind stuff. I don't want no super sour, nothing, bro. I don't torture my mouth hole. My mouth hole, like, you should be going, I dare you to eat the most delicious, tender steaks that have been marinated to perfection. Dare me to do that. I That's a dare that I'm, I'm here for. Dare me to do the good stuff. I don't fucking dare me to do stuff that sucks because I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. I'll fly you to the store to play commander with people at the store. We can do that. No one will touch your butt. No, no, never mind. The fact that you said no one will touch your butt means that somebody's gonna. That, like, there's gonna be cameras, too. You can't fool me. When someone says something's not gonna happen, that's what's gonna happen. Like, if I go come to my house and play magic, I won't put two fingers in your ass. They'll be like, okay. <laughs> okay, no, I'm not. There's no fucking way. There's no fucking way, bro. <laughs> Word choice matters. Speaking of which, this is hilarious. Carly got me in her gratitude journals a while back. Um, well, she got me one a while back. Her more recent. Who cares? It's not a clarification. It's important. <laughs> no. She's just writing in it. And she's like, like, you're a good thing in my life. So I wrote about you in the book. And she's just like, I'm lucky that I have a husband that loves me and isn't abusive. And I'm like, this reads like I was standing over you with a belt going, you better write that I don't beat you in here. Like, it's just so funny because she's just, 
like looking at people online who have that kind of stuff going on, like all kinds of awful things that are happening to other people. And she's just writing something positive about me. But like, the, <laughs> it's just when I'm reading it, I'm like, somebody's going to read this and be like, he must have like just been standing over being like, write it! <laughs> like, <laughs> and then we both laughed about it. It's pretty funny. See Bowser now. The Bowser's like he's like he puts on. <laughs> oh. Never know what's gonna happen. Stuff gets crazy some nights, bro. I am envious of the fact that you have like actual jail cells in your shop. That would be fun stuff to record with. I'm gonna do the American tour where I'm gonna fucking show up with Desolator and we're gonna show up at your fucking store with AK 47s because you can just do anything in America. We're gonna fucking show up with a couple of goddamn bald eagles flying us in, Booka! smashing through the fucking windows. Both of us will get down on our knees firing the gun into the fucking ceiling on either side. America! We're fucking here! That's what we're gonna do, man. We're gonna. Fuck your shit up, bro. It's going to be the best. It's going to be the best. Dominic's going to bankroll it. He's going to pay for me and Desolator to fucking show up at his store wielding fucking AKs. Wugga, wugga, bugga, 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 bugga. <laughs> Desolator's pretty close as far as you know. He's closer than you know. He's right, be he's, he's right beside you, bro. I got my agents up on you. You're going to feel Desolator thumb in your butt in three minutes. T minus 180 seconds <laughs> to contact. <laughs> oh, felonious T, you just laughed so hard you choked. <laughs> Call him Big Shooters. Yeah, yeah, Big Shooter number one. Bugga, 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 bugga. Damn, you just got home too. I used to tell people when I called them, like uh, when I worked in call center and stuff, I would tell people I was in their basements and shit. <laughs> I'm like, yo, they're like, oh man, you're great. I wish you were here right now. I'm like, yo, I am. I'm in your basement, bro. And it's like, they're like, what? I'm like, just listen, you hear that? That's me. <laughs> like, <laughs> that shit worked too. People, I'm, I'm a good phone salesman. People will buy shit from me. People will also support charities when I call them. <laughs> I make it fun. <laughs> Just, there you go. I, oh, I sure hope that nobody here is going to put a thumb in my butt. <clears throat> oh, that's right. On the, on the awesome side of things, man. I'm so glad that I got the, um, the new GoPro camera for conventions and stuff. Got the comic convention coming up, Comic Con. Got another event that's happening way later in the year. So details about that will become available later. I don't even know exactly when everything's going on. The, the, not not everything's been 100% concreted out, and I still need to acquire tickets and arrange accommodations, all that stuff. But but I'm looking forward to it. Ask Saffron all to come down. He seems nicer. Yeah, well, I mean, let's be real. Is there anybody in the magic community who isn't nicer than me? I'm the meanest, most savage fuck in MTG. I thought that was clearly established. I don't think anybody else runs live streams where they'll tell you to fuck your own mother, right? Like, there is nobody as vicious and savage as me in the magic community. Fucking straight statement of fact, son. So, of course, everybody's nicer than me. Set the bar all the way to the ground. Of course, you're going to fucking step over it, bitch. Anybody can do that. Oh, man. Working on that Medieval Time video. Well, by working on it, I mean I watched the video and haven't written anything down for what I'm actually going to say. Because it's just going to be a bunch of ranting. <laughs> something I wanted to remember to talk about, but I can't remember what it was. I guess it doesn't matter. Me! 
eh, what else? I played my green tower, had some fun with that shit. Those, bro, those fucking blue decks, those blue decks that are about tapping down creatures, the little like ninja tap down creature deck with the hover bikes, I hate the flavor of those decks so much. I hate it. I put out a little flying wizard guy. Okay, okay, all right, not too bad. All right, now I'll put out a ninjutsu moon circuit hacker. Oh, God, do I hate that name, but ninja, whatever. We got ninjas and magic, it's got a dumb name. Okay, I'll put out a speed hover bike. I'm like, oh, it's time to suck a poisonous snake off. All right, um, yeah, so I see the hover bike and I'm like, oh, ugh, dumb. Anyways. Those decks fare pretty poorly against my my uh, my big green tower, where I just end up fighting their crap, beating the hell out of it. I just pound them down. I've noticed they really don't stand up very well to my particular deck. So whenever I see one of those, I'm like, ha, 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 easy meat. Yeah, yeah, Andrew G, the bar isn't on the ground. It's literally fused into the concrete like a rebar. That's great. That's great. Jess, when you watched my videos, you thought I was like a dork. Oh, who's this friendly whatever guy? And then you come to live streams and it's like, holy shit. <laughs> well, my videos used to be like that too. I used to rant and swear in the videos, but I stopped at a certain point so that YouTube wouldn't fuck my channel to death. And uh, once they stopped doing the crazy shit that they were doing, where they were just, they were whipping people out of the YouTube partner program like fiends. So I spent a 24 hours just hacking away all the most questionable shit off my channel trying to survive. I'm like, go, 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 go. It was the night of fire and death where thousands of fucking like, yeah, I would say like a thousand live streams and videos together were silenced in the night. And then I went, okay. They're going to fuck me if I swear in my videos, so I got to stop. And then by the time it was okay to swear in your videos again, again, and YouTube stopped being dickheads about it, like only the biggest people could swear at that point, or you were fucked. So I was like, oh man, I refuse to give it up in the live streams, obviously. No, this is the vestigial tale. But once they eased up and I could go back to telling people to get fucked in my videos, I just had to wait like 5, 10, 15, 20 seconds. I was like, well, now it would be unfair to the viewers because a bunch of people have said, like, I watch this with my kids and whatever else, and I don't want to do that to them. I feel like I don't, I like, I feel like I can do whatever I want because I can, but I try and, like, I know I rant sometimes, you guys, blah, 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 believe me, believe me, I don't have to, whatever for you. But at the end of the day, I try and respect you guys. That's why Fantasy Geographic, instead of turning it into something else, I just left it until I can come back and do that or decide I'm fully done with it, right? That's it. Being 100% legit. Same kind of deal. Same kind of deal, right? So it's like I got a bunch of people watching with their kids. I like that. You're enjoying magic with your kids. That's a good vibe. And I don't want to fuck that up. I don't need to swear in my video. Sometimes I say some adult style stuff, but in a way the kids wouldn't pick up on and, and not, you got to worry about. And I mark my videos as not for kids, but I still make my videos for all ages, really, right? Like that, I consider them for all ages, but you should probably have a little bit of parental discretion. The live streams, on the other hand, are get your fucking kid out of here. Are you kidding me? What are you, brain damaged? What are they doing in here, you know? Johnny, you don't like the new set kind of blob? Yep. People are gonna wait for Modern Horizons 3. There are some for sure, for sure, who are doing that. Every day, what the hell is that? Should have an OnlyFans where Perp just makes sweary magic rants. That's what this is. You can just jerk off to these. What are you talking about? What, you, I gotta fucking do it naked? Or whatever? What? How would that make it better, bro? Do you know how distracting my big dick is? For real. You're just gonna be like, what did you say? Between those fucking beautiful eyes and that fat dick, I was just thinking about how unfair life is. You know what? I'm putting it out here for the internet right now. 
Everybody who doesn't have a big dick needs to shut the fuck up about, oh, I got a big one when you don't. Because you're not fooling the women. You're setting them up for fucking disappointment. And you're a moron. And you're making it harder for those of us who fucking do. Because they go, yeah, guys always say that. That's what Carly said when I told her I had a fat dick. There was a chick I worked with. I slept with her. And she told other guys about how big my dick was. And I'm like, bitch, go and fucking tell the women. What are you doing? Why are you telling these guys this? They don't want to hear it. I don't, like, what... What is wrong with you? And people are like, yo, it's like, whatever, motherfucker. I don't need to prove it to you, bitch. The women see. It was funny because I said to Carly, I went, I had my tea, right? And I said something about it. She's like, yeah, guys say that. I put my drink down. I'm like, listen, anybody who says that is a moron. And when I say it, I fucking mean it. You wait, right? And she was like, as soon as you said, listen, and like, put it down. I already believed you, so. I remember the one chick not believing it, but there was a chick I had been with sitting right beside me, and I'm like, yeah, it's like this. And she's just like, yeah, right. Chick was like, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. So there you go. I get to be fucking funny, smart, and hung. Boy, life ain't fair. Life ain't fair. And I'll tell you this as well. If you're somehow young enough that this message is useful, but not too young to be in my fucking audience, Figure out what size condoms you need. They say that you can't feel nothing in it. So if you put a regular size condom on a fat Johnny, then guess what? You're not going to feel shit. You just be like, wow, they are right. I can barely feel anything, right? I only found out by accident. I thought that I just was normal. But I went to sleep with the chick and she had this condom that said right on it, large. And I'm like, oh no, like I'm like, I, I need a condom to bang this chick. I don't have one. But for real, if I put a large condom on from some previous guy that she's been with and it falls off, show's over, son. Show's over. I can't imagine limping faster over anything than, oh, wow, this thing's loose. But I tried it on. I'm like, oh, it fits perfectly. And then I found out the great truth of the universe. Big dick guys get fucking discounts on condoms because large condoms are always on sale. They were always on sale. I'm like, this is awesome. Although, condoms fucking suck, bro. Let's be real. Anyways, enough bragging about my meat, I suppose. Got to make sure you get that out of it. I don't think I had one of those rants up on the archive yet, so may as well fucking save that for posterity. <laughs> but no, I ain't doing no fucking OnlyFans, all right? Only my wife and, I don't know, random guys at the park get to see, <laughs> get to see my meat. Dominic, did I say tread on a used condom? Oh my God, bro. When I was a kid, my cousin found a dirty condom in a fucking driveway. And he was like, it was all rolled out. It was rolled out in the driveway. And he's like, I could use this as a basketball net. And then he cut the, we didn't know what it was. And then he fucking cut it and made a little basketball net out of a fucking used condom we found in the driveway. And uh, when I was, geez, what was I in like grade five or something like that I don't know it was definitely before I got to junior high I got somehow a condom and I tore it open like I tore the packaging open and I took the condom out and I hung it on a tree on the path that we walked to school right so on my way to school I hung it on the tree because I was on the way to school by myself on the way back from school I'm hanging with my friends so I was like, yo, check it out. There's this condom on that tree. And they're like, oh, gross. And I ran up and I picked it up and I put it right to my mouth. And I went, and they're like, ah! <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome. That was great. Joe says, time to take a trip to the park. <laughs> It's like, this is pointless. I talk about how that chick should have been telling all the all the other chicks about my dong. And here I am just yelling to a bunch of dudes how I got a fat dick. <laughs> how useless is that for me? Doomblade says, to be fair, you don't want to wish it for it to be too big. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Or else you'll be in pain for most of your life and limping a lot to places. Don't ask. I have a normal big one. The guys, some of those porno guys have these where you're like, that's an arm, bro. That is a weird looking arm with a cyclops eye at the end. And I have no idea why any of these women agree to have anything to do with it. Because like when you're horse cocks Jones, it's too big, bro. It's true. You don't want it to be too big. That's hilarious. I saw the saddest, most gross fucking porn ever when I was, uh, God, I don't even know how old, but like forever ago. But, like, this guy's dick was so long that it looked like half of a fucking hula hoop, right? Like, 
It was like that long. He was standing and the thing was all the way down into the chick's mouth on the ground. And then there was the guy who had two dicks and his like his hair down there was this weird, gross, matted, red, orangey. And it was just a weird mass of flesh that turned into two dongs. And some cracked out whore had to suck one of them while the other one bonked her in the forehead. And I was both, I was both um, horrified and hilarified at the same time where I was just like, this ain't fake. I thought this was going to be fake. This is so fucked up, man. This is so fucked up. I can't look away. I can't look away. Most messed up shit that I have ever seen. And I'm thankful for that because I don't want to see the really, really messed up stuff, right? Go to the <laughs> Gianna says, go to the park where the old man will let you pay five bucks to touch his wrist. <laughs> <laughs> Jenya, you liked the yesterday keychain uh, nipple ring warlord part, did you? I had completely forgotten about that. And then somebody clipped it. And I went like, what did they clip? And then it's me slapping my belly, yelling about being a warlord. I really am an unhinged maniac. <laughs> so yeah, man, there's some... There's some trouble and stuff out there. Some trouble and stuff. All right, hold on. Get a text the film. Yeah, I shot her exactly. If it's a cartoon, it's just like, whatever. It's just somebody drew something goofy. In real life, it's troubling. It's troubling. Gianna, tonight's your first night to try and sleep without your pain meds. Come on, Benadryl. You gotta find something. You gotta find something. Hmm. Nope, still can't remember. Oh, well, whatever. I've been having more fun playing around with magic now that I ain't worrying about the story. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. Man, I'm getting pretty fucking hungry. Carl, if you can hear me, put the fucking pizzas in the oven. <laughs> by the crappy Papa Giuseppe Garbo pizzas that we're having in the oven. <clears throat> it's a zombie. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Why don't they make standard pre-cons anymore? Uh, well, dude, that's because they're fucking dry hump commander and they want all the money and they're also short-sighted fucking morons who thought that everybody would still play standard and they could just keep milking it for money and now they're scrambling going, oh, standard is three years and whatever. Because they're fucking idiots, that's why. Because they're fucking stupid. They're like, we'll get everybody on Arena. Hey, they don't spend nearly as much money on Arena because the experience isn't as satisfying and there's not physical cards. Oh, fuck, we had a gold mine selling standard cards. They wanted commander decks with every standard release because that makes sense. Hi, I want to play standard. Okay, we have these decks. This It's like, okay, are they for standard? Nope, not at all. Okay. So what do you have for beginners? 
Oh, we, I have a go fuck yourself. Kindly go fuck yourself is what I have for you. Gianna, the guy who lives behind you, his sister's visiting. She has two dogs that look exactly like yours. They are your dog. Both of them are your dog. Don't you understand quantum fucking physics? Oh, stupid phone. You text somebody. I don't know if your guys' phones do this, but it's fucking obnoxious. You respond to somebody's text, and then it pops up like, you got a new text. That's my text! I said that, you stupid phone! Why the fuck are you lighting up to show me what I said? Fuck you! Standard would never be a non-rotating format. Wizards doesn't want non-rotating formats at all. That's why they fucking lied and gave us historic and then went, we created alchemy and forced into it. You don't get a non-rotating format. And then so many people quit that they're like, okay, we'll make a non-rotating format, but you gotta let us take six years to do it. It's fucking ridiculous. The fucking arrogance of these worthless dickheads. I don't think Carly heard me about the pizza. Everyday arena feels like they took magic and stripped it of all its fun. Uh, I understand that mentality because there's been a bunch of times where I felt like arena hasn't been fun. I've been having a lot of fun with it lately. I'm not going to pretend like I haven't. I'm like three levels away from finishing the Markov Manor Mastery Pass. And I've, I've been playing arena every day now for weeks, I think, at least. So it's giving me joy, but I'm being selective about my experiences. So... I've been playing a ton of the starter deck stuff because I just love the little set environment and mucking about with it. And that white blue deck is a lot of fun to play. And in other events like that, like they got the totally not your average event or whatever, or totally normal event where they have all these different crazy decks like um, an awesome Gix deck, a crazy Urza deck. So playing those things too and playing a 250 card green deck in standard ranked, but only to get from bronze to silver so i'm not playing anything too intense and it doesn't even matter because there's no chance to lose my progression and i'm only doing it to get a little bit more rewards to spend combine that with the fact that i got hundreds and hundreds of wild cards i got like eight draft tokens 1500 gems 370,000 gold i have all these resources i built up from when i played before and i'm just like yo time to start spending some of this down having a good time so for me I'm straight up enjoying Arena. I've been able to avoid a lot of the stuff I don't like. I'm su I'm actually surprised by how much I've been enjoying it. I've been playing enough games that I'm getting like 10, 15 wins a day sometimes. And I've played that white-blue deck uh, six, 700 times at least. You know? At least. And that doesn't include all the other decks, which I've been playing too. Not as frequently, but I've been playing them as well. So... I have gotten like so many games of Magic in because of Arena on top of going down to the game store and playing. I am like, I am extracting maximal joy from my Magic experience as much as possible going forward. So I'll continue to talk about the issues that are going on with the game, but I'm ramping up my joy side of things because it's been too negative for too long internally and I just need good times in Magic. That means Arena. That means Chandelar. That means physical Magic. All of it. All of it. Jenny, you don't play rank and you love arena? Yeah, ranked is the worst place to be. It's only good to go in and grab your rewards. Unless you're somebody who really wants that sort of hustle and bustle, in which case it's perfect. Gianna, you yell at your landlord sometimes to do the dishes? I'm going to yell at my landlord to come do my dishes. 
<laughs> Chris, you get special for going to the game store as well? Wait, I should be registering for what? Demon 20 Child Super Chat says, Do you think it's weird that not all the serial... Do you think it's weird that not all the serialized bobbleheads are not on sale on TCG Player? Are you asking, do I think it's weird that not every bobblehead that's ever been made that's serialized isn't for sale? Or are you asking that, is it weird that if you go to TCG Player, there's only particular bobbleheads you can find that are serialized for sale? Because those are obviously two very different questions. Do I play my Tower of Power in 60 card or Brawl? I play my Tower of Power in 60 card. Brawl won't let you have any size deck, will it? Also, I don't really like Brawl as much. It's okay, actually. I guess I don't really have a problem with Brawl because it's one-on-one. -on -one. I'm indifferent to Brawl, I guess is how I would say. It's not currently pulling me in, but I'm going to leave myself open to the possibility because the event that I'm playing with the Gix deck and everything is Brawl, and I've been having fun with that one. Today... Today, I managed to get out a 4-5, the 4-5 Flying Demon that says, when I come out, all your opponent's creatures get minus 2, minus 2. And I got a, a, a Helm of the Host on it. <laughs> so every turn, it made a 4-5 Flyer that gave all my opponent's creatures minus 2, minus 2. Suffice it to say, I won that game, bro. Millmaster, you've been throwing down in Legacy on MTGO. Nice. I had considered some MTGO action, but for the time being, it's Arena, Chandelar, and uh, Physical Magic because the whole MTGO, you got to put money in, and Arena will let me get free resources. So that's the level I'm balling at. When does uh, Chris Bloomborough is... September-ish? Something like August, September. Around that time frame. So, like the third quarter of the year. About six months out. A little less. But yeah, honestly, I've genuinely just been enjoying Arena. Despite my annoyance with Magic. Oh, man. Man. Uh, Jen, you know I don't have anything in my MTGO account. That's the main reason I would say that keeps me away from it is the fact that, like, I don't want to... I don't want to spend money on digital magic cards. Do you know what I mean? So, I'm cool with playing digitally, but not paying digitally i'll pay for physical magic cards and i can't afford to get what i want there so that's priority number one i can't afford and these ones are lower tier so i just take the free experience you know doom blade super chat says i usually play a hundred card brawl with nissa that grabs all your forests it's so funny sometimes when they quit on activation you take all my forests you better believe i'll quit thompson you saw cleopatra oh there you go build a commander deck around it if it pulls you in do it up do it up Demon Child, only particular ones. I feel they are slow rolling out the follow packs and the other ones are coming in later. That, I believe, is the case. Um, I'm guessing they do have more. Also, the more desirable bobbleheads, the stronger ones are probably going to not be for sale because somebody's already snagged them up. There is that possibility. If only particular ones are up for sale, you have to have A, the fact that people want to sell it, B, that they're specifically going to TCG Player that you mentioned. And on that note, everybody in the stream... I do have a TCG player link. So, don't be a dink. Use my TCG player link. <laughs> Edge, do I think tokens are insane and out of control? Oh, yeah. They just seem go ham with whatever. Oh, today, we're doing a million treasure tokens. Today, we're doing a million food tokens. Today, it's a million different creature tokens. Today, it's tokens that are actually straight up magic cards with flip cards and actually you split them in half and they have more abilities inside what yeah and you staple this part on top too what is going on so yeah <laughs> i do 
Temporary lockdown. Yep, that's one way to deal with it. Demon Child, you'll definitely use my thing, my link. Thanks, buddy. If you if you bookmark it as your like when it comes to my TCG player link and my Amazon link, if you bookmark those links, then you automatically use them every time you shop there. You just click on your link or whatever and use it to go there. You don't even have to think about it, and you're hooking me up. And as a special reward, since we're talking about links, can give you guys another taste of the goodness. Don't be a dink. Use my Amazon link. When Hatchet goes for a drink. Bookmark that Amazon link. Don't be a bitch. You gotta scratch that itch. Bookmark that Amazon link. I got fucking bills to pay y'all. Use my Amazon link. <laughs> this is gonna take some work. Not gonna lie, guys, I was like, I, I tripped out for a second and almost clicked like stop stream after I pressed that. Like, you know, when I switch over to the floating in the water, I'm dead, bye guys. Uh, I almost basically triggered that response in my brain where I would have done that and then just not come back because the stream was over. I was this close to like, I had the mouse over the stop stream and click and I almost did it. That's right, Millmaster. Complexity of magic was tempered by a small, tight standard environment for novice and intermediate players to learn and cut their teeth in. It was a great on-ramp. But now that everything's a big old circus park of commander, nobody knows what to do anymore. Keebler, you don't see the TCG player link in the description? Uh... Oh. You're not stupid. I'm dumb. It's not even in there. How does that happen? We gotta fix that. Good eye, Keebler. What a fool I've been! Okay, if you check again. <laughs> Thatcher was a dink. He lost the Amazon link. <laughs> I was a dink. I lost that Amazon link. I don't know what to think. What the fuck happened to that Amazon? No, TCG player link. I even fucked up this song. But I got a fat dong. And we're carrying on. To go bang your mom. <laughs> don't be a dink post that amazon link don't be a dink where the fuck's the tcg player link <laughs> genya oh no 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 i mean i know what you're saying i could have just used it generically but you think i'm not going to make another one for tcg player we're going to have multiples we're going to have multiples Oh, the link was in the sink. Well, Keebler, thanks, buddy. Thanks. Uh, now I've got to actually double check and make sure that it shows up in the stream archive. Yeah, they're in the stream archive uploads. We're all good. So if you watch it afterwards, it'll already be in there. All right. Nice. Nice. Doomblade, you have a stepbrother you hated who played magic and your Gladys enjoyment is ruined because MTGO's falling apart. <laughs> it's the bitterness that keeps me going. Demon20, you pulled it off my other channel. Good job, buddy. Good job. Because I apparently am not on the ball today. What do I think about these Star Wars Unlimited cards? I don't think that they're unlimited at all, bro. Ever heard of something called the heat death of the fucking sun, right? Total solar fucking collapse and like the end of Earth, right? So can anything be unlimited? The answer is no. So it's a lie. That's what I think about Star Wars. Unlim un 
limited. Like that song, no, 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 there's no limit. You know what I mean? There is. There is a limit. And it, it, the limits exist. Nothing is unlimited. Everything is a limited time offer. Everything. Everything. <laughs> techno, 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 techno. <laughs> Do I think Duskmorn has a chance at being good? Yes, I think it has a chance at being good. I'm hesitant, but it has a chance. It could also be, check it out, here's Jason and Freddy and the guys from Five Nights at Freddy's. And it's like, oh my god. <laughs> it's like... Bloomboro is the biggest hope of 2024. Bloomboro is the great green hope on the horizon that is keeping my sanity tethered to this pathetic flesh bag here. 26 producers and 8 writers to make that song hit. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Oh, man. Ugh. All right, it's time for me to hit the old dusty trail, pilgrims. All right, this fucking this stream is now for the birds. Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> 